Someone's come to free me. And a famous witcher at that. Thank the gods. I'm damned lucky you happen to be in Kavir. Was it King Tancred who sent you, or the Society of Magic? Neither, and we're not in Kavir. We're in Skellige. Welcome back to another Witcher lore video. I've decided to make today's video on the Northern Kingdom of Kovia. So as always, I'll begin today's video with some basic information about this kingdom. I'll then move on to its history, its coat of arms, its cities and keeps, its regions, its monarchs, and finally, a little bit of trivia. So to begin with, the basic information on this kingdom that you just need to know to get an idea of what this kingdom is. To begin with, it must be stated that the Kingdom of Kovia and Povis is by far the wealthiest of the Northern Kingdoms, and this is in no small part to its large array of mineral resources. So a little fact for you all, it's actually the largest exporter of mineral resources in the world, even more so than Mahakam, which is impressive because as you know from my Mahakam video, Mahakam is known to have a lot of and I mean a lot of mineral resources, but this kingdom just trumps it. It's also one of the few northern kingdoms to have maintained complete neutrality in the Nilfgaard Nordling Wars, and did not send aid to either side, and just remain completely neutral. Kovia and Povis's landscape is described as very mountainous, and littered with mines. Its main exports actually include glass, silver, iron ore, salt, lead, nickel, zinc, chromium, tin, titanium, copper, platinum, and tungsten. And for the other materials that are purely Witcher creations, I suppose you could say, it also supplies three quarters of the world's chirobolitium, ferroorum, and dimeritium. And it actually possesses 80% of the world's gold. So as I said, this is an incredibly rich kingdom. So it's definitely the richest of the Northern Kingdoms. So funnily enough, a little fact I want to tell you all is about its real world counterpart. Because every kingdom in the Witcher world is based off a, uh, I suppose you could say, a country in the real world. So it's thought that this kingdom is potentially based off either Switzerland or Italy. And the main reason I say Switzerland is because of its landscape. As I said, it's very mountainous, it's neutral. And obviously that's two comparisons already. But it's thought that because of a city called Lanexeter that's said to have canals and great things like that, that it could potentially be also based off Italy. So it could potentially just be a mix of both. But yeah, picture Switzerland, look at a picture of the mountainous sort of Switzerland amazing landscape, that's probably what it's like there, but more rocky I'd say. So now I'm going to move on to this great kingdom's history, which is actually very, very interesting. And I actually learnt something new while researching this, as I'd never really picked up on this before. Kovia and Povis was not always the richest kingdom in the north, and in fact was at one time considered the poorest of them all. The poverty of Kovia and Povis was, I suppose you could say, almost legendary. It was actually coined into several sayings. For example, there is a saying of being poorer than a mouse from Povis, and also having bone broth being referred to as Koviri delight. There are many, many other phrases, but they're not exactly important, but you get the picture. This country used to be incredibly poor, or this kingdom. So anyway, getting on to its beginnings. A few generations ago, Kovia and Povis was actually owned by Redania, but Radovid I, or as he is more commonly known, Radovid the Great, decided to gift this kingdom to his brother, Troiden. You may be wondering as to why an intelligent and great king would give away such great lands, and there are actually a few reasons why. To begin with, at the time, no one knew of the rich mineral resources housed in this kingdom. You've got to consider that if you looked at this initially, it's just this rocky landscape where it's difficult to farm, build, anything else like that. It's just, a, it's effectively just mountains. And he also wanted to absolve his brother of any vassal obligations, and you know, simply keep him out of sight. As he wanted to have all the power, I suppose you could say, because brothers of kings do have a little bit of power, but he wanted it all. So he gave his brother this land, his own country. So the gift of this rocky hell was clearly meant as an insult to his brother. But sensing the opportunity, Troiden willingly accepted it. I suppose you might want to say that because it's his king, he was kind of obliged to accept it as well. So after only a short while, time proved that Radovid I had made a grave error. As stored away under the lifeless rocky landscape, was enormous deposits of vast mineral resources, and also rock salt. This sudden realisation caused mills, forges, and workshops to almost blink into existence, and soon after, Kovia went from rags to riches. So anyway, a few generations passed, and King Radovid III decided to correct his ancestors' mistakes. He initially began by making an offer to the Kingdom of Kovia and Povis, hoping to change the contract Radovid the Great had laid out. But obviously, the kingdom refused. <laughs> Seeing that the only way to reclaim their lost land was to go to war, Radovid III called upon its age-old ally of Kedwen to reclaim the kingdom. But Kovia and Povis had expected this, and used their vast amounts of gold to hire the best mercenary armies known to man, and the invaders suffered a staggering defeat. After this short war, 
war, Redovid III was forced to sign a pact known as the Treaty of Lan Exeter, which not only verified Covia's independence, but also allowed it to stay neutral in the wars to come. The neutrality sort of act, I suppose you could say, was held by the ancestors of the kings of Covia right up to Tancred. They never partook in any wars and just kind of focused on themselves. Also guys, just to clarify, Covia and Povis are actually the most northern kingdoms of the northern kingdoms, hence why staying neutral is so easy, because they have this massive buffer zone for the Nilfgaard wars and they have no reason to take part in it. So in the later years of the 13th century, Covia was ruled by Estrad Thysen, which I may be saying wrong, <laughs> who was known to be as wise as he was greedy. This did not prevent the further development of Covia and Povis, as the kingdom is known to have a free market policy which allowed it to sort of blossom and become such a great kingdom even under a terrible ruler's rule. And also, the University of Lanexter soon surpassed the Academy of Oxenfurt as the leading seat of higher education in the north. Which is kind of interesting because as we know, Oxenfurt is where Shani went, Oxenfurt is an incredibly prestigious academy, it's always mentioned in the books, but the academy in Lanexter is widely believed to be even more so. And considering what the kingdom used to be, also also, the Kaviri metallurgists compete with whatever the best of Mahakam can offer. And that basically, what I'm saying by that is that Kovia and Mahakam are kind of at a competition to see who can make the best things, and Kovia can actually compete with the dwarves and the gnomes. Obviously, the gnomes are far more advanced, but they don't really sell that to normal people, I suppose. So it's safe to say that this kingdom is a force to be reckoned with. So, now for the end of today's video, I'm going to list a few more things that I mentioned at the start of the video. So to begin with, the Koviri Coat of Arms. So if you look at the Koviri Coat of Arms, it has actually gone through a few changes over the years, but it's currently a white closed gauntlet on a red field. And this is due to the current monarchy there, or the current rulers. So its cities and keeps consist of Aid Gwynvale, Lan Exeter, Pont Vanis, Rack Verilin, Tridam. And you probably have heard of a few of those, I think the most notable are probably Lan Exeter and Tridam. So the regions that this kingdom controls obviously include Kovia and Povis, but also Talgar, Narok, and Velhad. And Talgar, Narok, and Velhad are actually vassal duchies of this country. So it's similar to how Temeria owns Mahakam. They're still separate places, but they own them. Its current known monarchs are as follows. Trovden, Geduvius Trovden, Gerard Trovden, Estral Thysen, Baldwin Thysen, ID of Kovia, Reed of Povis, Estrad Thysen, and Tancred Thysen. Finally, to end today's video, I just want to tell you all a little bit of trivia. So on the map presented to us in The Witch 2 Assassin of Kings, the kingdom of Kovia and Povis is portrayed as two separate kingdoms, along with the kingdoms of Velhad and Talgar. This was most likely an oversight on CD Projekt Red's part, as they are technically all under the same kind of rule similar to how Mahakam is under the rule of Temeria. But it's just an interesting fact they put that on the map. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's lore video, guys. As always, these videos take me a long time to make, so be sure to like the video. If this is the first video you're finding on my channel, be sure to watch some more. I do lots of Witcher lore that you probably find interesting. And also be sure to subscribe if you enjoy it. As always, be sure to go and follow my Twitter for updates on things. I do little polls on there where I want to ask you guys stuff. A lot of people want me to do Q&As, AMAs, all that sort of thing, so I'll probably pose the questions on there as it's a little bit easier. Um, if you're already a member of the Discord, then you can probably get a link to my Twitter from there to, um, if I, if I ever decide to do something like that. So be sure to join the Discord also to meet with other Witcher fans, of course, and post your stuff. We have art channels, Gwent channels, loads of stuff in there. There's about 250 people in there, 260, I think, something like that. That's a lot of people. Probably more. I haven't checked in a few weeks. <laughs> so also, of course, be sure to go and follow my Twitch as I stream games on there whenever I can. I'll probably stream on there tomorrow as I have a little more time tomorrow, and I'd love to play some games on there for you. Also, one thing I wanted to announce is that soon, I'm not sure when, I want to do a new New gameplay series as there's a game that I've been wanting to play and I thought I may as well record it while I play it and that game is the Batman Arkham series I've played through it once before and I really enjoyed it and I think if I played it again I would love to do that on the channel I'm not sure how that would fit into the schedule I'd have to work it out somehow maybe I could alternate between Witcher parts and that that might be interesting for you guys but we'll see I mean I won't do it for a while I'll have to at least to finish the Witcher 1 by the time I start that I also want to do Bioshock at some point but I feel like I'll save that for a bit and as always a big big thank to the Patreon pledges I got two new Patreons recently and had to add another page to the whole Patreon end scene thing, the end credit bit. And honestly, guys, I think if it ever gets to something like, I don't know, 100 Patreons or 50 whatever patrons, I may have to up the rewards from maybe $1 to, I don't know, $3, $2, because uh, I don't want the entire video, as I said, to be end credits. <laughs> I don't want to have that at the end, because I feel like then people who have actually donated won't even, people won't even bother watching their names, because it's just, it's such a long list. But thanks you to everybody who does that, it's very, very kind of you. I know a lot of you donate not to get your name at the end of every video, not to get the rank of Grandmaster or find out what videos are a day early. I know a lot of you just donate to support me, so thank you so, so much for that. 
it means a lot to me and you guys are all awesome. But anyway, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video and have an awesome rest of the week guys. Have a happy week. This should be coming out on Monday, so have an awesome rest of the week. It actually makes sense this time. See you later guys.